Oh, so y'all want to talk about some shit? Y'all want to talk about some real shit? All right, that's cool, man. As promised, YouTube channel. Excuse me if I got some shit on my lips. A lot of things on my brain, yeah, yeah. But I gotta maintain, yeah. No umbrella, I'll be dancing in the rain, yeah, yeah. I'll be dancing in the rain, yeah. No umbrella, I'll be dancing in the rain, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting more for the pain. Let's talk about the Fat Boy Party. So let me give you the scoop. Let me give you the inside. Let me give you my insight, my thinking. Let me tell you how it went down. And listen, I ain't gonna cap shit. I'm gonna give y'all niggas real numbers, real prices, real things, man. This is my real life. I ain't fucking around. It's 2019. Summer 2019. Listen, man, I was, I was promoting for a bar that I helped build with my own hands. Don't let a nigga tell you different. I had that spot rocking, man. Like that shit was packed wall to wall. I'm in a promoting game. And I felt like I was a lone wolf, man, because like my city and like a lot of your cities, very political for a small ass city. There's a lot of size and shit. But anyways, the bar gets shut down. And like, man, I'm used to getting this money. I'm used to stacking this bread. I'm stacking a G a week for 20 weeks straight. I was getting to this money. You know what I mean? Legit. I was like, fuck, what's the nigga gonna do, man? So I come up with an idea like, yo, let's throw a party. And like at that time, I was already booking Instagram um, sensations. I booked Pose Lethal the Puppet. I booked Chink Capone. I booked Ken Stars and a couple others, man. And I was like, yo, I gotta do it. Big, yo, who am I gonna get this time? I only got six bands left. So I come up with the idea like, yo, let's book Fat Boy SSE. Well, I've been trying to get Fat Boy's attention for, for a while now, man. And uh, I locked in with, with his cousin, Ron Savage. Rest in peace, Ron Savage, man. My nigga passed away, man. He had me and Fat Boy link up at a show in Worcester. So I drove 45 minutes to Worcester. After the show, Savage is like, yo, um, yo, Fat Boy, this is my nigga Kino. And Fat Boy goes, the nigga who did the Popeye skit, like, I know who this is. I know who this dude is. And like, off gate, I'm like, oh shit. Like, fat boy know who I am? Dude showed mad love, I took a flick with him, posted it, man, city went bananas. My man tells me his price. He tell, First he tell me it's like seven bands. Then we go back and forth to six bands. I got him to five bands. I'm like, I bet, but I'm like, fuck, I only got six. He want his money right now. He want half right now. I, I just spent the money. Had 500 to my pocket, had a little bit of tree or whatever. I still got four kids and a wife, you feel me? So I'm taking my last $6,000. I'm booking Fatboy SSC and It's a Honey. I just paid them 2,500 down payment. They're gonna get the rest when they pull up. And I'm like, all right, bet, it's on. So now I get to work. For a month straight, all I did was eat and breathe this party. I woke up in the morning talking about it. I went to sleep talking about it. It's all I worked on. We was passing out flyers, man, every day. 10,000 flyers got passed out. Me and my boy Yolo was passing out flyers. He came and helped me one day. And we were so fucking broke and so hungry. And we just happened to walk into a pizza spot to give him flyers to leave on the counter. And uh, my homegirl Jess was working there and she hooked us up with a couple pizza slices. And um, she doesn't even know how much I greatly fucking appreciate that because I had no fucking money in my pocket. I was stealing fucking lawn signs. You know, the, you know the lawn signs they be putting in there, like vote for this person, vote for this person. I think it was like Senate time. And my bad, I probably affected some of the votes, but I was stealing them shits everywhere. I was going from Massachusetts to Connecticut, finding these lawn signs, man, just pulling up, stealing them, stealing them from, stealing Walmart signs, stealing McDonald's signs, stealing fucking Burger King signs. Whatever little post-up signs they had, I was stealing them. And then I was taking the posters and I was cutting them to size and I was refacing all of the lawn signs, you know? And I was going to the busiest intersections, hopping out, putting these replastered lawn signs everywhere people would pull up and see, man. The same day at the party, had Pop Smoke coming to the city by another well-known group of promoters, more well-known than me, at a club that's more fitting. At that time, he was still new. He was, he was, he was buzzing. He was definitely buzzing, but he only had that, he only had that one song out. Maybe a week or two go by, People are talking about Pop Smoke, they want to perform there. People are talking about Fat Boy, people are hitting me up to perform. And then Pop Smoke gets canceled. They canceled Pop Smoke because they said it was safety concerns for the city. And even though I believe it, I honestly felt like, I felt like, nah, man, these niggas know what's up. These niggas knew I had them because I'm out working a group of people. And everybody want to perform at the Fat Boy party now because the Pop Smoke shit ain't an option. Niggas is getting their money back. And I'm like, nah, like, ain't nobody performing at the Fat Boy party, but Yola, man. Yola's my nigga. Yola's holding me down. Yola's been side by side. Yola always fucking showed me love since day one. A lot of these niggas ain't showing me no love. And I was so I was so comfortable with getting the money back off the tickets that I didn't need these niggas' money, man. I was so loyal to Yola and I and, and I really believed him so much in his music that I wanted him to have 
the correct amount of um, shine on him. You know what I mean? Like, this, this nigga's time to shine. This nigga deserve it. This nigga work his ass off. And this nigga is nice. I get the whole city buzzing. The whole city buzzing talking about this party. Everybody's talking about it. My son's middle school was talking about the party. His teachers knew about it. People in the hair salons knew about it. White kids knew about it. Everybody fucking knew that fat boy SSE was coming to Springfield Mass. And I was like, yo, I fucking did it. I did it. There's no way, yo. I stole lawn signs, hundreds of lawn signs. I put out 10,000 flyers. I wrote Fat Boy SSE on my truck. Every skit was about Fat Boy SSE. I hashtag Fat Boy SSE. I put $300 behind the ad on Instagram. I was emailing everybody. I was messaging everybody. I was in everybody's DMs until Instagram blocked me out. I put everything I fucking had, every bit of energy, every bit of effort, Every bit of motivation that I had left in my body, I put it all in this one party. And the whole time I'm thinking like, yo, I'm looking at my kids like, yo, we can go broke. We can be fucked up after this. Shit was wild, man. Like I was really grinding. I was really putting in that effort. I don't think I've ever worked at anything harder than the Fat Boy SSC Halloween party. How could it not pay off? I prayed every day. I talked to God every day about it. God know I ain't want to be in a trap. God, no, I want to be in the streets no more. I had my brother's money. I hadn't even had to borrow 500 from my mama just to get by one month because everything was tied up. I had my mama's money, my brother's money, my four kids, my wife, my household riding on this one party and their daddy's work effort, their brother's work effort, their son's work effort, all of my work effort. And I gave it everything I fucking had. Everything. There's nothing I would change about what I did for that party as far as promoting. I had the whole city coming up with gifts for him and his wife, drawings, mixtapes, clothes, anything you could think of and put it in gift bags. And I did it as a way for my city to promote themselves and actually have somebody that's higher than them and be able to touch, like be able to reach out to them. And that's not really something we get all the time. We don't get that kind of opportunity where I come from. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to give my city opportunity. Mind you this whole time, me and Fat Boy, we've been talking. He was hitting me with motivational things like, bro, you're funny. Keep going with the videos. Don't stop. Like, out of the blue, I would just be having a tough day and a nigga would text me and be like, bro, like, I see you. Keep going. And coming from Fat Boy, like, man, that meant a lot. Like, that's another fat nigga. You know, the jewelry, man. You see the fucking jewels that nigga wear? Like, damn, I just want to be another. I want to be another fat nigga with jewelry on. You feel me? And I never hated it and I'm never jealous. I just respected it. Because I said, bro, you don't figure it out a fucking way. So when a nigga like that is texting me, I'm like, man, I'm starting to get like, I'm starting to get attached. I'm like, yo, this nigga fuck with me. This nigga really like me, man. Like, oh shit. Like, I knew I was different. I know I'm different because a nigga of his stature, a, a, a nigga of his stature is fucking with a nigga like me. And I don't got my hand out. He must see that I'm working. The capacity of that club. The club is huge, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm against it all. That's why the fuck I was working so hard. I was against everything, man. Even the size of the club shit holds six, seven hundred people. So if you got a crowd of a hundred in there, that shit look dead. And, it, and, and, and the last bar that I was at, if you had a hundred people in there, that shit look crazy. Amount of energy I put into that, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, I'm not fucking losing. Now the party man rolls around. Tonight is the fucking night. Tonight is the fucking night that I come back. Tonight is the night that I double up. I'm gonna make this happen. Tonight's the fucking night, man. Tonight's the night I come home a champion. I come home a winner. Crowd starts coming in. People are at the door in the beginning. Nine o'clock, people are at the door trying to get in. I'm like, oh shit, this motherfucker gonna sell out. My vision's gonna come to life because I pictured a fucking line around the block for this motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? I pictured this shit gonna be flooded out. We're gonna have, we gonna have to, we gonna have to shut the doors early. We shutting the doors early tonight for sure. 10 o'clock came, still early, still slow. I'm counting people. I'm like, it's cool, man. People come out late here. 11 o'clock come, 12 o'clock come. P people are there for sure, but. It, it's not enough. Fat boy pulls up. This nigga late as fuck, yo. It's like 12, 15. And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to book you for, you know, at least two hours because this is Springfield. This ain't Jersey. Clubs close at 1 30. 12, 45. Him and his girl kind of get out the car. They're like, oh, what, it, what it look like out there? I'm like, oh, it looks, it looks good. It looks good. I couldn't even think about if it really looked good or not. I just knew that, yeah, it might have looked good, but I know I didn't make my money. 
And I was thinking about my kids the entire time and, and what the fuck I was going to do. But I was still kind of keeping that faith, man, that, that people want to rush in. Fat boy comes in. I walk out with him. The light shine on him. light shine on me. You know, Fat Boy's talking this shit, yo. We say shout out to Keenan White, man. The, the crowd go fucking crazy. I was like, damn, man, this nigga really co-signing me. Yola performs, Yola smashes it. The crowd loves it. They know his music because Yola's a hell of a performer. Remember, I get on stage and uh, and I'm like, man, I appreciate everybody for coming out that came here and fucked with me tonight. Thank you for supporting my dreams. I said, this is for my girl, my mother that was diagnosed with cancer. Keep pushing. And I just remember being emotional as fuck because when I was telling people keep pushing, I was really talking to myself, man, because I knew my money was fucked up. I get off stage, Freddie hands me the bag, man, and I'm counting through the money and I'm thumbing through it and I'm just like, I know it's not all here. Like, I know the six grand I spent is not here. And um, I think the bag was like 2,500 or, or, or $3,000. After the club, we walk to the back, man. I grab a flick with uh with Fat Boy, and uh, I didn't even post that picture, man. I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> I had tears in my eyes at about twenty five hundred dollars. I felt like a fucking loser. I talk to Freddie, man. We have a little discussion. Fat Boy hits me like, "Bro, let's link up." We pull up to the gas station together, man. We end up shooting a skit. Um, it's actually the skit where Fat Boy pepper sprayed me. If you guys haven't seen it, I'm gonna I'm let it play right now. Come on, Fat. Don't do me like this. Don't do me like this, Fat. Hey, what up, fam? We ain't family, nigga. Uh, I don't know you. Nigga, I know you. I don't know you. I got you on Instagram. That doesn't mean you know me, nigga. I send you messages every day, man. I leave you on red. Mm. The fuck is you talking? You don't know me. I'm Hollywood. You forgot where the fuck you came from, Fat. Well, listen, you forgot this. Ah! Yo, that's real pepper spray. My man really pepper sprayed me in the car. And it was telling me, yo, don't do it, don't do it. But I was like, man, listen, like, yo, when we were shooting that skit, I felt like a fucking loser. I felt like a bum. I'm, I'm used to having some kind of bread and I ain't got nothing. So I'm like, man, fuck that. Just pepper spray me, my nigga. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing can be worse. Just pepper spray me. He pepper sprays me. We do the skit. I can't even watch the skit. These guys is, is, is re-watching it on the phone, laughing their ass off. Fat boy, these people ask me if I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You know, they help me wash my eyes out a little bit. They, they throw me two shirts and um, fat boy and these people head back on the road, back to New Jersey. My nigga Luke sticks with me for about an hour in the gas station bathroom as I'm continuing trying to wash my face out, you know, the water, the milk. I drive home, face burning. But more than my face burning, I'm, I'm hurt on the inside. And I got pulled to my crib. I pulled to my crib and uh, I'm inside. I, I don't wake nobody up. I take a shower. My back is burning. My face is still burning. I get out, I throw some clothes on. I go in the living room. I sit on the couch. My girl's up, she walks me, and I'm just sitting there, I'm crying on the couch. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really crying, like a fucking baby crying. Because I'm like, yo, I have $2,500 in my pocket. I failed, I'm thinking about everything that, that took to even have this party, the risk that it took, I'm thinking about all my hard work, I'm confused, I'm like, how the fuck does this not work? I worked way too hard. Everybody was telling me, like, people were calling my phone and saying, bro, you worked way too hard for this party to flop. This is it. Everybody's telling me, like, you know, this is it. This is your time, my nigga. This is your fucking time, bro. A couple days past the fat boy posts a skit. Skit goes crazy. My phone starts blowing up. I never had my phone blow up so much off of Instagram. You know what I mean? It's going fucking crazy, man. All these other big... Instagram people um, I work with are seeing it. My city seeing it. All his followers are seeing it. The video gets like 500, 600,000 views. 549,000 views, I believe. And and overnight, I go from having like only like 1,000 followers or 1,500 followers to, to over 5,000, 6,000 followers. Like I've gotten 4,000 followers in one night from Fat Boy posting my shit. So I have... 
My phone blowing up, followers, people hit me up, people are calling my phone, people are, are telling me, hey, hey, is this, hey, is this, is this Keno? I'm like, yeah, they're like, can we talk to Fat Boy? I'm like, man, time pass. I still talk to Fat Boy once in a while. Um, I remember doing this little picture and uh, I reached out to Fat Boy and I'm like, yo, uh, yo, is there any way you can, you can help me with this? He's like, yo, call me. I'm like, all right, bet. I call him. He's just like, uh, I call him. He's like, yo, what you got for me? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, what you got for me? He was like, you know, I'm in tune with Lizzo's camp, right? I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's dope. Like, could you help me out? Like, and I tried to tell the nigga a little bit like, bro, I kind of fucked up from your party. I don't really have much. Just tell me what you want because I'm not, I'm not going to, if you say a price and I can't afford it, then, then I can't, then I can't afford it. I'm not going to have it with you. I kept saying what you got for me, what you got for me, what you got for me, what you got for me. Couldn't tell me a price. And judging from that and our conversations after the party, it was like we kind of disconnected. Went from, oh, I thought he was fucking with me. He's co-signing me to what do you got for me? And a couple of times in the way, like when I told my, my people, like what's going on with the conversation is like, yo, bro, like they wanted me to feel some kind of way about Fat Boy. And sometimes I did. But then again, it taught me a lot about relationships and business, man. I was kind of hurt about that too because <laughs> no homie, man, I thought, I thought the nigga liked me. I thought the nigga that I wanted to be like, liked me. A year passes from this party, I'm, I'm back up financially, we're good. Because how I got back up, that's a totally different YouTube video that I'm gonna make y'all niggas watch. I I pay my man Jose Lito the Puppet some money so he can promote me on his Instagram and on his Facebook. And the skit he tells me to give him is the Fat Boy skit. This is a year later now. After being up and down and up and down financially and going through my feelings and being confused and, and so forth. And the video ends up doing a million views on Facebook. My first million views. So something that I did a year ago that I was looking at as a failure, a year later, I actually started my Instagram career, like my following, like it gave me that big boost I needed. And it also got me my first million views on Facebook, which led to more followers there, more followers on Instagram. And just the feeling that I accomplished something because when you get your first million views, it's definitely a big deal. We got a cake at everything. Shit meant a lot, we made shirts. Looking in hindsight about everything about this party, what I would change business-wise, I would change this. I should have paid three grand instead of five grand. I would have to understand that me booking Fat Boy was not the best fit for my crowd. If the party was 18 and up, which our city's not allowed to have, it would have been bananas. Even more crazy than what, what it really was because people did come out, people had a great time. That's why I would have changed business-wise, but life-wise, I wouldn't have changed anything. Sometimes your wins isn't counted by money. Blessings come in different forms. I've been through some tough times in my life and this was probably one of the, one of the toughest. I mean, mentally it was the toughest. I had to think about a lot. Financially is one of the toughest. No matter what you're going through, as tough as it may seem, think about a time where that was the toughest time. But you got through that. Times are tougher than others. But you got to be tougher than all of them. I appreciate y'all fucking with me, man. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Share this shit. Leave a comment. I truly, truly appreciate y'all fucking with me, man. Keep pushing.